Or can you hear me all right now? Yep. Yep, we can hear you. And uh, we are recording and welcome to the live podcast here at the Crown Council. Today we have one of our trusted resource partners, Bryant Truitt, with us. And um, we are excited to hear Brian talk and share with us a little bit about fraud prevention and especially as that relates to the current times that we are in. Um, Bryant has um, been in business and, and, and gone through scenarios like this through the 80s, throughout the HIV crisis. And, and I feel like Bryant has a lot to share as um, his profession relates to the current times uh, with COVID right now, how to, pre how to protect our assets um, Bryant, welcome to uh, our live podcast today, and, and thanks for being with us. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity, and it's a pleasure and an honor to be with you, uh, Spencer, and your group. Yeah, as Spencer mentioned, uh, some of you will remember the uh, glorious 1980s in the HIV crisis that we had at that time, and particularly the patient uh, and media reaction does it uh, sound familiar to anyone? It certainly sounds very familiar to myself. Uh, I've been involved in fraud, embezzlement, waste, and abuse in dentistry for over 25 years. So uh, it's, a, it, it's a scary time for everyone. But the result of the uh, situation back in the 1980s was that uh, there was a, a move toward better PPE becoming available, and, and because of that, uh, many of those items have now uh, become very normal. And uh, it can easily be said that um, that could be the situation that we're going to be faced again, that there's going to be P&P &P policies and procedures that come along. I know the... Uh, Texas Dental Association has got uh, a document that they've put out regarding that, and I'm sure other state and, and organizations, professional organizations, are going to be doing the same thing. So we're facing another time of new normal, and that is with the safety and the P&P, &P, which will move through and through fine-tuning uh, both at the federal and the state level and associations will become normal and the, and the United States will continue to have the, the world's finest dentist and dentistry. Now, one thing I would like to mention is the fact that at the current time we have the coronavirus, but uh, don't forget that in, in the fall of this year, we're going to be faced another time of flu. And so what we learn now and, and what we see coming down the line in P&P &P will come at us again for many years to come in the form of the flu season or other pandemics. And, and it's a great learning opp opportunity for dentistry and, and the patients and the public in general. Now, uh, there is no debate that this is a tough time and that the patients are really focused on safety first on this clin uh, the clinical side, but also remember that on the business side, nothing has really changed. Everything that we are faced in, in dentistry on the business, on the business side is, is going to be with us. And we have to be just as alert as we always should be. And we're going to be visiting about that and I'm also going to touch on a couple of uh, subjects that uh, I have uh, great sensitivity to. So let's, uh, let's move on regarding those uh, uh, subjects that we're going to be covering. And why should we be concerned about the, the office side, the business side of the, of the uh, matter? Well, part of it is, is that you've been closed for quite some time. In many instances, uh, totally closed. Uh, some of you have had the, uh, 
the opportunity to do uh, emergencies. Some of you have had the opportunity to work in your practices, possibly going through uh, procedures and policies in the, in the practice on the clinical side that you'd like to address when times come back to being open on a daily basis. And the business side of the practice, you've possibly been looking through uh, paperwork or bank statements or credit card information, uh, information that you may have gotten from a financial planner or someone like Kane Waters, uh, Sunrise Dental Solutions, or one of the other uh, practice groups that help the other groups that help practices. And on the business side, we have to be even more alert today than we we're always should be 100% alert, but today particularly because of the time that these people have been uh, unable to get into the practice, they're going to be coming back, and the offices are going to be under a, a new time of how to react to calls that you receive from patients and also calls that you're making to patients. All right. So, in the time that you've been call, uh, you've been closed. The POI, what we call the party of interest, in many instances, have not been able to get into the practice to maintain their their activities. And you may have found opportunities that they may be looking at as ways to do the practice harm. Let's hope that's not the case, but. Let's be realistic about it and, and look at uh, some of those situations. Now, if they have, if you have someone that is unfortunately doing the practice harm during that time, they have been extremely nervous and they need to get back into that practice uh, that they are doing those schemes and reactivate their activity. Over the years, we've seen that these people uh, are really addicted to the lifestyle and so they've got to be able to get back in the practice as soon as possible and start working their schemes again to maintain their their uh, lifestyle so fraud embezzlement waste and abuse is a big big item on their agenda to make sure that they start getting that activity up and uh, up and running now still on the practice uh, business side, we provide a vulnerability index. And if you wish to have a copy of that, just send me an email and I will email a copy of that vulnerability index, which will list 20 different areas of the practice that these people are most generally interested in and uh, items like uh, discounts, write-offs, uh, EOB adjustments, uh, you name it, uh, cash management, how they work cash, but send me an email and I'll send that to you. Be happy to do that. Now, when they get back into these practices, one of the areas they're going to be looking at is the AR, and they will look for ways that they can make adjustments against that AR to be able to hide cash transactions that you may receive in the practice. And also ways that they can make transactions, let's say move from a cash to a credit card, but actually there was no credit card transaction sent into the uh, a credit card processor. So those are a couple of ways that they or will be interested in moving uh, money, particularly if they receive cash into the practice, they will make it look like it was a credit card transaction. And that's just two ways that they can do that very easily. Now, another thing that we need to look at and, and be very diligent about is the scheduling that you have to do for your team coming back into the practice after any pandemic or a lengthy time that the practice has been closed, particularly in this situation where family members may be uh, in a stress situation or uh, they have to make arrangements for daycare or they themselves are sick 
any number of uh, of areas of concern on scheduling, make sure that you're involved in the scheduling techniques that are being implied in your practice because very likely you are not going to have a full team coming back the first day you open your practice. And one of the things that you do not wish to do, I would, I would submit to you, is to try to hire temporary people to come in and cover for someone that is not able to come in and work. Be careful of that because you're not going to have the time to do background checks and reference checks. So try to, as you best uh, you're able to do so, cover the front desk as professionally with the, the best people you can possibly do uh, right. to cover during that. Can I interrupt there just for one minute? So essentially what we're learning from is these that those that have been out of I mean as long as the office has been closed temporary closed somewhat closed these these that are doing uh, embezzlement or have these fraud schemes they are just as hungry to get back into what they were doing beforehand as anyone is to just get back to normal work. Um, hey, Brian, and one thing, if we could see you, you in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, you can click on the video button so we can, we can see you as well. That would be uh, helpful during your presentation. Um, it's actually um, on your Zoom, on the Zoom um, screen. Yeah, it should be there. And if you click on, um, uh that's that, that's okay but let's um let's get back to that word document we just want to be able to see you while you're talking so brian walk Are us the, through the um is that, am i doing the right thing no we we cannot see you um right now we would love to be able to we'd love to be able to see you while you're talking from your camera where do where do i need to click um you know I uh, I don't want to take too much time on on this one, Brian. All right. But um, so I um, I think that they are just as hungry as we are to get back to work as they are to get back to work for what they were doing beforehand, right? Absolutely, and the, and they need to get back to it as quickly as they can because they could very well be in as much stress as the practice on paying bills and trying to maintain their, their schemes to their type of lifestyle that they have become addicted to. Yeah. So what do we watch for? What do we watch for when they come back to work? Okay. You know, what, what do we watch? What are we looking first for? First thing, one that? of the, all right. One of the first things you want to do is to make it well known that you're going to be looking at your uh, adjustment write offs discounts report that comes out of the AR uh, out of your practice management software system and be diligent about looking at that report and the end of the day reports make sure that you're receiving your end of the day reports and look at the day sheet look at the adjustment report that comes with the day sheet and make sure that you look at the balance uh, the uh, uh, the bank deposit slip but compare the bank deposit slip that prints out of the software with the day sheet numbers to make sure that the day sheet numbers that show as money received and, and deposited and also recorded on the, on the bank deposit slip that the computer prints and the deposit slip that goes to the bank, make sure that all three of those numbers are the same. Make sure that they're all the, the and printed the same day. Try not to let the numbers be transported into a Tuesday or a Wednesday if, if the business day, your business week is starting on a Monday. Try to make all of the transactions recorded on the software the same day that the practice is open for that day. Okay? By doing that, you have. Uh, due diligently looked at the amount of money that's on the day sheet, the amount of money that's on the deposit slip that is printed out of the computer, 
And you've compared that to the deposit slip that went to the bank and the deposit receipt that you got back. Make sure that all of the numbers are, are the same. That's your best protection. Okay. Very good. Does that answer? Yeah. Does it that does. answer your? I, it does. I just I think that um, what comes to mind is we've had the opportunity to kind of wipe the slate clean, so to speak, over these past few months. And maybe some of um, our practice owners, dentists, have been in there and uh, you know looked at the books, or maybe they have cleaned up a little bit reconciliation processes or maybe have new ideas going into this. And so as we open doors back up, um, we just want to make sure that we've got this side dialed in. And like you're suggesting, this is a good time for our dentist to kind of be able to say, hey, there's a new process each day where we're going to do some reconciliation and here's how. Um, just so that we don't walk right back into the same uh, scenarios before where we have no idea about embezzlement that was taking place or so forth. That's, that's correct. But, and I also would recommend that you print, have the uh, front desk or the office manager, your office administrator, print out an, a fresh brand new as of that day when the door is open, an AR report and also accounts receivable report and also an insurance outstanding claims report and have those as your base day one of, of the uh, balances that are due from patients and also claims that are outstanding and see how you're going to progress and the receipts are going to be measured against those reports to make sure that everything is being recorded properly. Also check with your office administrator that they have gone online and checked the portals for the EOBs that are coming electronically and make sure that those EOBs are downloaded and that uh, you wish to take a look at those AO, uh, EOBs, do a sample of them to make sure that you're getting those EOBs downloaded. But make sure ev the most important thing is your end of day reports that you're going to be printing out of that computer system and have them show you also how you can print those reports. If you don't know how to do that, Make sure that either you call support for your point of your uh, practice management software or have the office administrator uh, show you how to print those reports yourself. You need those reports to measure how you're doing since you've reopened. All right? Very important. Uh, one of the other things that I'd like to mention is that team member scheduling and clocking in is very important during one of these times where the office has been closed because that's an easy way for they, for them that wish to do the practice harm to have influence into the payroll system. So make sure that everybody understands that they have to uh, be scheduled properly by the office manager or the person that takes care of that activity in the practice and also that they clock in. Uh, they can play games with the uh, payroll system if, they, if they're not doing that and you're not watching it, okay? Very good. All right. Hey, Brian, um, with about uh, seven minutes uh, left, um, and I also would like everyone to be able to see it, if you, if you click up in that, uh, box that is black and it says Bryant at Bryant at true you know if you go up there there is a no 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 up in the box that you can see yourself or your your website on you can see Jeanette Kern's picture you can see my face um, you can see your green phone that you dialed in um, can you see that on your screen I can see your face great can you see the other faces and the other websites and like your phone that is dialed in, not on the word document, but up above where 
all the other people here? Up, up higher. You can actually, uh, you can click on them so that we can see you, the camera. But um, here, there you go. Now your camera is on. Now we, now it's just pointed at the ceiling or somewhere else. It's not pointed at you. There, there's Bryant. Okay, Bryant, give us some, um, give us kind of um, just uh, some, some wrap up uh, Q and A, and I'll also open it up. I've asked some questions. Uh, what, what would you, if you were to say, just you go back into the office. Um, step one is X, and and you we we understand the accounts receivable. Um, printing it off, matching it up. That's a great point. Is there anything else? And and I would also add to that. Sorry, this is kind of a longer question. Uh, or a statement and a question. It is, it just has to do with um, those those that have not been working are extremely hungry to get back in, as well as to get back to their old habits of embezzlement. Um, and uh, I feel like that's going to be key for our practices to be prepared for and eliminate right off the get go. Correct. Absolutely. And one of the best ways to do that is for uh, me to send a vulnerability index to them. It gives them 20 different ways that they can, 20 different areas that they can look at for uh, possible embezzlement. And the easiest area is the, the biggest vulnerability that a dental practice has is uh, discounts, unauthorized adjustments, write-offs, and the playing games with recare. Um, uh, now, the recare is is a soft area because that's generally one of the very first areas a fraudster will turn to, not to pay any attention to, is recare. So, if we see the recare system is broken, we have a very good. Uh, uh, idea that the practice is broken, believe it or not. Okay. So also you need to be cautioned during this time and take note of this. Uh, this is a really easy one for them to do at, during a, a time where the practice has been closed is backdating. Don't let anyone backdate. They will try to do that. So look for backdating on your daily reports and uh, also run the audit trail. If you don't know how to run the audit trail, call and find out from your support group of your software how to run the audit trail, okay? It's very important. Mm -hmm. And those are really good suggestions on how to protect yourself in these times, all right? Those are awesome, Brian. We uh, really appreciate uh, Brian's feedback as well as um, his continued support within the uh, Crown Council as a um, trusted resource partner. Um, any any questions from uh, anyone else uh, before we begin the wrap up? Um, you can either type them in or or just come off mute and share with us if anyone has any other questions or or comments. Um, Brian, I would uh, again want to say uh, we appreciate you. We appreciate you being a uh, trusted resource partner of the Crown Council. So everybody knows this has been recorded and these, these steps are going to be shared and sent out via um, email to the Crown Council network. Um, and you'll be able to click on and listen to this, uh, this meeting that we have had today. Brian, any, anything else that you'd like to share with us as we, um, begin, begin to wrap up? Don't forget to have counsel with your team about financial arrangements. Uh, financial arrangements during this time is a, it can be a real testy area of, 
to be able to talk to your patients about. But make the patient uh, the main focus and, and trying to help them the very best way you can. But don't forget to get their signatures or their input and agreement on your financial arrangements. And don't get careless. Uh, and it's easy the thing to do to to do that during these periods of time uh, regarding the financial an, uh, arrangement area. And you will also be requested by the patients for charity work. So you need to be alert of how you're going to handle uh, requests from patients for charity work because they've, they are in a financial bind or they've lost their job. So make sure that everyone in the practice is talking the same language on charity work or it could throw your practice into a bit of a tailspin in that area. And someone could be making promises that you cannot live with in the long term. Okay? Very good, Brian. Brian, we appreciate you. And um, we appreciate those uh, watching and listening today. And we look forward to uh, being together with you again, Brian, as we uh, uh, continue to learn more from you throughout these times. Um, be safe, everybody out there. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow on the, on the live uh, podcast series of the Crown Council. Um, appreciate you and uh, talk to everybody soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a blessed week.